right, we're back at it again tonight. Uh, running the same test with the same heating element and PID. We've just installed it in the Yoder smoker. Uh, this is a YS640 smoker. Uh, done a pretty poor job of wiring this, but again, this is just a test and I'm monitoring the whole thing, so uh, I don't recommend you wire this if you're just if you actually want to use this in your smoker uh, obviously wires hanging everywhere um, the way I wired this I basically just kind of took uh, I didn't want to drill any holes at this point in the smoker so I took the uh, this 12 gauge wire went right up through the drain hole in the smoker and routed that over I'll show you that in a second uh, Everything's the same as in uh, the other video that I had. Uh, PID is programmed to go to, I think if I move over here you can read it better. Uh, programmed to go to 200 degrees. Yeah, it's sitting at 143. And we're still running ballpark around 8 amps. Solid state relay. Uh, I'm not running the fan on the smoker at this point. I suppose I could do that. So by doing that on a on a Yoder smoker, if you have one, you can turn it on. It can sit like that all day, no problem. Uh, it's just running a recirculation fan and won't actually start to generate heat until you program it to do so. So that might work okay. Uh, do a little more testing and figure out how this needs to work. But again, the idea here is that this is a preheater for the smoker. What we're trying to do is warm up the metal reduce consumption of wood chips as well as preheat the thing uh, initially so when you come out early in the morning it's ready to go and you haven't wasted a whole lot of wood keeping it warm all night a little further automation temperature dropped a little bit when I turned on that fan that's to be expected uh, Yoder smoker has a has an exhaust port here and you can always kind of feel the the flow coming out of there um, just because of the drop in temperature there I'm going to turn that off right now the idea here is that this could be used to supplement the heating uh, later on but the, the, I don't have the heat diffuser in here so I, I kind of I flipped that off I kind of feel like that uh, we're basically just pushing that heat right out the exhaust and that's not what I want to do with an electric element. So let's take a look at what's going on in here. You can feel the, the heat definitely when you open this. Uh, you can see the element glowing red hot. Run a Again, a kind of a temporary setup here, just for testing. Everything's clamped in place, uh, right next to the burn pot. Wire runs back behind a uh, just an aluminum plate that I stuck in here for, for a heat shield, just to make sure nothing got fried in the process. I don't think that's going to happen here, but we're not taking it up very hot. And again, here's my 12 gauge, this 12 gauge Romex. Nothing fancy. Uh, permanent installation here will use high heat wire with uh, their fiberglass or ceramic coated wire. And if you don't already know the terminations when you use high heat wire, also need to be high heat, either stainless steel or 
uh, nickel plated things like that the, uh, the high heat can corrode cadmium and other plating metals so you have to be careful with that So we'll run this tonight, kind of check it out. Tomorrow we're going to repeat, kind of see where we're, how, how long we need to run this, uh, essentially is what I'm looking for. And I'll put the heat diffuser in tomorrow. So hopefully we have another uh, video for you tomorrow.